So is Draymond Green just gonna like ruin the rest of Steph Curry's prime? Is that is that where we're at? He already did it. <laughs> the, the, he the already damage, did it. The damage is done. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> the name was the death blow of the dynasty. It's been the death blow. <laughs> <laughs> today, yeah, today it all it all fell down. Yeah. Wow. What's up, y'all? <laughs> As you see by the title, today we're gonna be rebuilding some of the worst teams in the NBA. And originally, when we decided to do this a couple of days ago, we were thinking like. Let's talk about what the Bulls got to do, the Raptors, maybe the Hawks, if we're going to pile on the Mo, all that. But then Draymond Green decided to mollywop Yusuf Nurkic and today get himself suspended indefinitely, which, yes. as we just said, seems like the death blow to the Warriors dynasty. We all thought this would be the last dance, and now it's even crazier than we ever expected. So we're going to rebuild them as well. Yeah, <laughs> a lot. we are t- literally 24, not even 24 hours fresh off of Draymond Green trying to knock Yusuf Nurkic's top off. And this news just happened quite literally th- two, three hours before we press record. You know what I'm saying? So this affects a lot. And what better timing it is to just figure out how we're going to rebuild what Draymond seemingly destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love being dramatic. Yeah, he's yeah. definitely not helping. But there's a lot bigger problems that do the Warriors that we talk about ad nauseum over the past few weeks that... Let's lay it all on the table. Let's talk about the Golden State Warriors in depth. <laughs> the cranium is crazy. Oh my God. I mean, I really don't know, don't know what to say. Crayon eaters rejoice. Man, that brother needs help. <laughs> that was the best thing to come out of this. Yeah. Yusuf Nurkic was just like, man, I don't know. I get it. Uh, he needs therapy. <laughs> just straight up. It wasn't even like therapy though. It was just like help. Like I don't, I don't know what. <laughs> I, like it wasn't even like, hey, we're gonna get you a doctor, right? We're gonna get you somebody that you could talk to. It's just, hey, you got problems at home? Figure it out. <laughs> like I don't know. What's going on. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> He, yeah, I'm sure he doesn't want to be on the opposing end of that again. The funniest part was in that same uh, post conference that he said that. Yeah. He also was like, thank God he didn't choke me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's just so funny. <laughs> After that, he said all that when Rudy Gobert did get choked. He was over there talking about, you just didn't want to play without your guy, Steph. You're running. It seems like collectively the NBA is just far less respectful of Draymond Green than they were in the past. It's like all his chirping finally caught up to him and everyone's just like sick of it because they're not winning like they used to. He's no longer this like big dog that can say whatever he wants because he's, a, you know, like one of the most important parts of a dynasty. Now he's just an asshole. Yeah. Yeah, like, no, he's all a clown. Of this, yeah, he's a, exactly. Yeah, all just, this in the last 12 months, we witnessed him punch the shit out of his teammates in the playoffs, stomp on someone's chest. Literally three, four weeks ago, Put Rudy Gobert in a chokehold, and now he's after another center swinging on somebody. And at, like at a certain point in time, and it seems like we've gone to this time to where we have to have a serious conversation that we're having about Draymond, who he has started to become as a player. Yep. Like there's ongoing memes about him being just overly aggressive at random times and his body just losing absolute control. But now it's up to the point to where you're literally sabotaging the future of your team. Yeah. The part that bothers me is like, he's a smart guy, clearly, right? Like overall, he's clearly an intelligent dude. It shows in his play. It shows in everything else about him. He's not an idiot, but he treats us like we're idiots regarding all this. Like he said at the end, I was trying to sell the foul. I was trying to sell the foul, blah, blah, blah. You watch it. He gets touched in the back. His jersey pulled ever so slightly. The most regular NBA defense you can imagine. And he spins around like a Beyblade and backhands Nurkic like... The way he tries to sell it and play it off like it's some natural movement is just like insulting to the intelligence of everybody because it's like everybody besides him understands that he looks like an idiot trying to pretend he's not just hitting somebody. Here's the thing, though. I don't think that he I don't think that he thinks that he's lying to us. Like, I don't think that he (laughs) thinks that he is like telling some story. Right. Because if you look if you look at all the incidents, right. The, the Steven Adams one, all these like flailing ones where he ends up hitting somebody. He kind of has the same explanation every time. So I think in his mind, he's like, oh, I'm just doing this. Right. But we're all looking at it. So like, I understand what he's saying and I don't think that he's lying. But at the same time, I don't believe him because he clearly is lying because like he, you're just too reckless 
to be doing <laughs> this over an eight year span. Literally yeah. since 2015, 2016, you have hit somebody all out of pure recklessness every single year because you can't control your body as an NBA player. He's so, lying. He knows what he's doing. I'm not, I'm not even going to try and be diplomatic as you are. He knows exactly <laughs> what he's doing. We've all played with people that are overly aggressive and they're like, oh, my bad. Especially playing like, you know, football, the things, playing football, uh, basketball, football players. <laughs> There's yeah. always that one person that like throws a shoulder and they're just like, my bad. Blah, blah, blah. That's Raymond Green. He knows exactly what he's doing and just plays it off every time. This man just, <laughs> it seems like these days it's frustration. <laughs> Right? <laughs> this bitch is hilarious. <laughs> <The> WWE belts. <laughs> it's true as fuck. I need him on WWE Monday Night Raw as soon as possible. Yeah. I, do you guys feel like part of it is like, you know, it's always been a thing, right? I mentioned that he's always been this guy, but before he was co-leading a dynasty. So like he could get away with it to some degree. Whenever you're the top of your game, like you can, you have more leeway for bullshit. Do you feel like part of the increased acts of violence in the past 16 months <laughs> is because the Warriors are just like not winning and because he's just not who he used to be. The What every NBA player says is winning solves everything. Everybody's happy-go-lucky and you don't have a care in the world about anything else when you're winning. And the second that you, you have a couple L's on your schedule, you know, like that's when reality starts to set in and everybody's like pointing at everybody else for their own internal, for their whatever internal yeah. issues. And so like at this point in time, the vibes are just seem atrocious over there for the Warriors. And for someone, it's especially like, it's an amplified painful feeling. It's, it's loud as hell when it's like supposed to be the voice and the leader of your yeah, team, exactly. Draymond Green. Exactly. And that hits, that hits so hard in the soul, bro. And it's a thousand percent his fault too. The vibes are wrecked from the start because of him. That's the crazy part. It's not even just like he's a part of the issue or he's not helping the issue. He is the issue entirely. Like their vibes were amazing in 2022 when they won the title. Wiggins was popping. Jordan Poole was a third splash bro. Steph and Draymond and Clay were winning just like they always have been. And then he punched Jordan Poole. And for the lack of a better word, there was a vibe shift. <laughs> like <laughs> it all goes back to him and it's been downhill since. Man, Jordan Poole shouldn't have been talking though. Like <laughs> he listen, Jordan Poole wasn't wasn't acting like some, you know, like some diva who had just made it. Maybe the dynasty would have still been together. Now I'm not excusing Draymond for punching the teammate. You can't do that, right? But let's not act like Jordan Poole wasn't out here <laughs> chirping. But also the way, at the the way same everybody time, was saying that he was. With whatever Jordan Poole said, allegedly he said you're an expensive backpack for 30. Bar. Wasn't necessarily wrong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Should he have said it? I, I'm not I'm not agreeing with him. But was he wrong? Probably not. Man, you know, Draymond said some horrendous shit back. They're always talking shit, I'm sure. Just because <laughs> he struck a nerve one time doesn't mean Draymond can knock him the fuck out and ruin the team. <laughs> exactly. And but, <laughs> with all this being said, Draymond Green just loses a lot of like credibility and validity as a leader in voice in that locker room because you're out here doing the most reckless shit, literally doing the most detrimental shit to the team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. And I feel like a lot of his leadership cachet comes from the fact that he's Curry's guy, clearly. Curry wants him and Clay around him. That's a nucleus. Curry trusts them and they're his guys. I'm sure Curry defers to him a little bit as a leader because, you know, he's this loud personality, not necessarily who Curry is, and he understands the value of that. If he keeps doing this at a certain point, how much is Curry going to sit here and deal with? We've known for years that someone like LeBron has like demanded his team, put them in the best situation to succeed. Curry's never need to move like that because they've had everything. Is that going to maintain? Is he just going to sit here and deal with this guy doing this stuff? He's suspended for probably another 10 games at least. Like, When does that goodwill end? It ends now. It, <laughs> it, yeah. it ends now. I think that like, and even, even like LeBron in his tenure, He's never had a teammate be this reckless in in how they move. Like he's had people who suck and like that's easily <laughs> fixable, right? You go upstairs and say, hey, listen, have the locker cleaned out by 8 a.m. We're going to ship you <laughs> this way. Like we can do that. Steph, on the other hand, like you are actively, we're already down several players, right? Clay is washed up. Wiggins is playing like bust Andrew Wiggins again. Draymond, I need you to at least play 35 minutes a night. And you are out here knocking people out every two weeks. Like, we can't do this. And the the meme that has been that was going around for LeBron for the last two years when he started getting old, where it's like, I'm 36. 
that's Steph Curry now. Steph Curry's 35 years old and he's looking around like, this is my last opportunity to yep. actually win titles. And you are out here messing it up. I'm 36. Stop playing with me and my legacy and my title chances. <laughs> like, it ends now. That's what annoys me the most. Like, we're seeing an anomaly like we saw with LeBron James still being elite at this age. LeBron won a uh, finals MVP at 35 with the Lakers. Curry's still good enough to do that. Like, yeah. it's so rare that we're going to see a player be this good this late in their career and just seeing it be wasted by not only Draymond, the entire team. You mentioned Andrew Wiggins is back to being Bus Wiggins. You're putting it politely. That <laughs> motherfucker is bad at everything he was good at now. Everything that made him valuable <laughs> in 2022 is just the opposite. He's bad at all yeah. of it. Like, I guess we can I guess we can transition enough from Draymond slander to, like, talk about this team at large and, like, how Draymond's issues relate to everything else. But they have serious issues. And listen, they're two and a half games outside the 10 seed as the current 11 seed. I don't know if they have the juice to come back and get into this playing race. <sighs> Man, <sighs> it's not looking good for them at all. And at the start of the season, we were all trying to figure out. We all knew how good the Western Conference was this year. There was no room for any BS. Every team need to be, needed to be on their toes. You know what I'm saying? And my team was the Mavs. I forget which team you guys had picking out. Maybe you, you had the Warriors, Isaac. Not 110% sure. But regardless of the fact, the Warriors are that team. They're clearly several steps behind. And you have to start looking at every option possible everything has to be on the table when it comes to figuring out what needs to be done and a couple of weeks ago i was like yo like steph curry's still playing he's playing as if he can be a top three player in the nba or at least very least top for five sure. player in the nba for the next two to three years and we're talking about a top in my opinion 10 player ever here you have to do whatever yeah. it whatever it takes to put the best team around him to give to get you guys another championship because you're never going to see another player like him ever again. It doesn't matter. So what what does it take? Are we, are we at the point now where we know they're not trading Clay? They're probably not trading Draymond because Curry wants them there. Are we at the point where that is what it takes? Like, do you feel like he has to look in the mirror and like say we got to change something up? Like how it has to be a trade, right? Yes, it, it it has to be a trade. And like Draymond, Draymond's locked in. And I think that the first two things that you have to do is get Draymond out of there and get Clay out of there. Obviously, Clay's wow, not going really? anywhere. He's not going anywhere during the season, right? So this is like an off season off season thing. You offer him whatever know. whatever's possible, but he can't get what he wants because you kind of need him out of there. So like that's, apparently, that's, that's kind of ac according to Woj earlier today, he tweeted that the Golden State Warriors offered him like a two year, forty eight million dollar contract and dude didn't accept that. And so obviously he's looking for more money. And I genuinely don't think he deserves that. And I'm if I'm the Warriors, I would throw heavy head hesitancy to do that. And so with that being said, again, I know as, as much as people hate to even think of this happening, if Clay Thompson wears another jersey. Something must be going on with the universe. The world exploded. It's fake. <laughs> Matrix is broken. You know what I'm saying? But it, yeah. it it needs to happen. It needs to happen. And I'm looking at him before I look at someone like Draymond because I, regardless of the on other on court stuff that he's been doing, the random physical activities, he's been absolutely physical hooping activities. This year. <laughs> yeah, he's been hooping this. But that's year. the annoying part. That's the annoying part. He's still so good and like yeah. still is close to what he was in 2022, if not exactly the same. And yeah. it's so frustrating because I spent a lot of time arguing on behalf of Draymond Green over the years. <laughs> I'm sure Donovan can attest to it over the years in college, over the years online, in all content creation forms. I've been a pro Draymond for years. He has. I've always argued he's better than Clay. always has been, like one of the best defenders of his generation, maybe even of all time. Like, And he's made me not like him. <laughs> via, via acts of physical violence. Like the... the 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 act is just getting old. Yeah, it's it's old. I think that like it's it's tough. But you come to a point in every dynasty where like people go their separate ways, and whether that comes by like trade or even by like retirement, it even happened with the Spurs. Like Tony Parker ends his career in Charlotte, right? I there just comes a, there comes a time where. It sucks, but like that's pro sports. And so you're not always going to get yeah. to retire at the top with your guys with that same core. Because if that's the case, then you guys will be winning championships all the time. Like, but I think with, with Draymond, the the leadership aspect that we talked about earlier was hundred percent correct. Like his 
his credibility as a leader has obviously been diminished. But if he is not able to play a month of basketball straight without one of these things happening, then that is a legitimate problem. And if you have Clay Thompson, who at this point is, I'm going to say it, at this point, non-shooter, <laughs> Andrew Wiggins, <laughs> non-shooter. Oh, no, he shouldn't be shooting better lately, to be to be fair. Like over the last like, 10 games, he's close to 40%. Listen, I saw yeah. this man last night throwing up threes, hitting the side of the backboard. Nothing. No <laughs> rim. No rim. He's a non-shooter. <laughs> no rim. <laughs> and, Andrew Wiggins, non, non-shooter. Kevon Looney, non-shooter. Draymond Green, non-shooter. You have four of your five players in your starting lineup of the Golden State Warriors looking like the Detroit Pistons with the amount of spacing and actual shooting threat that you have. A change has to be made. He has too much money on the books. He's too costly right now. Everybody looked the other way when he lost them in the finals because they went and got Kevin Durant. You almost lost the finals again because you were out here chirping on the podcast every every two days, all that, all that type of stuff. <laughs> your, your time has come, right? You've done, yeah. You're doing too much. You're doing too much. You only have so much goodwill you can burn from all parties involved, including your teammates and coaching staff. Like, I can't imagine there's good vibes without a whole team in there. You know, their GM left last year, first year GM, has to make some tough decisions. It's got to be a nightmare in that building. I guess we can transition this a little bit. We talked at length about, like, they're fucked, right? Yeah. I guess we can go towards what the title indicates and talk about how they rebuild this, what they should do. Let's put together some moves and try to put together a version of the Warriors let's call it at the deadline, if they were to make these moves, that could potentially contend around uh, Steph. Personally, I feel like that starts with benching Clay and starting Moses Moody. Does that make sense? Yes. That's fine. Yeah, I like that. Like, I feel like we're well past that. These young guys have to start, right? Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. 100%. Moses Absolutely, Moody yeah. Hooper. Clay needs to be addressed first. When it comes to pecking order, like, I'm sorry, I regardless of what you think of Jeremiah, I think he needs to remain starting up. There's no situation or scenario where, you know what I'm saying, he's being dealt. Four-year contract, still good. 40% from three this year, whatever. He's solid. Clay needs to be addressed, and Wiggins needs to be addressed. And when it comes to rebuilding, yeah, I agree with that, Isaac. That's like the most keep the peace away thing, or keep the peace type thing to do. I think Clay Thompson, uh, hit, I think Steve Kerr and Clay Thompson, yeah, I think in a post game in a post game conference, he said something about possibly bringing someone off the bench and ruff, ruffling up that starting lineup or whatever. And Clay's yeah. probably the, the guy to. to do that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Another thing they can do, in my opinion, hey, put that man up for sale if he doesn't want to agree to that. Yeah, but what are they going to get for a 43 million dollar expiring contract that for a guy who isn't good enough to be on the team that fits him most? You know, like. Who's jumping for joy to acquire expiring Clay Thompson and give up anything of value that'll make the Warriors better this year? A team that's in a similar ish situation and predicament, expiring contract for expiring contract makes sense in my in my mind. And the specific team that I'm looking at, it's a team like the Toronto Raptors. Yep. What are they gonna do with Clay? Like they, they, Clay would be fantastic be- alongside Scotty Barnes. It's not like you want you yeah. want him pairing him. You want it's not like you want this long term duo to be a like, carry your future or whatever it's just like he's helping scotty barnes get his reps in and learn how to develop extra as a playmaker with all that space and that's that's the value i see with the raptors but no one cares about the raptors right now we'll talk about them later more so for the <laughs> um more so for the warriors this, i think if mm-hmm. the raptors traded pascal siakam for the corpse of clay thompson there would be massive violence in toronto across the city <laughs> well Hold on. Not also for the corpse of Clay Thompson. They'd have to tack on something oh. else. Um, though again, I s- the Warriors have every single pick that they every single pick that they have is theirs. You know what I'm saying? They don't own anybody, anything. And I think they could make this work. I think they can make this they work. Owe, now there's an they, owe, mm-hmm. they owe twenty twenty four. That's the only one. Oh, really? Two. Uh I think to Portland, I think. Yeah, that what it says. Yeah. Oh, was yeah to Portland. Oh, it's protected. Wow. Is lottery protect? Is it lottery protected? Yeah, can we zoom in a little bit? Yeah, it is protected top four. So they're not going to get top four pick. So okay. Portland, you're getting that first round pick this year. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, okay. Let's start from the top. I think it involves benching Clay at least. We can talk about if there's a trade out there for him. The most obvious trade that actually makes sense, I think, undoubtedly, is trading Chris Paul's contract along with draft capital. Maybe Jonathan Kaminga, if there's a really enticing piece. Who would y'all want to see that package be dealt for? 
I mean that you if you are doing that, you're gonna have to get either like the perfect role player, which at this point, I guess everybody's dream role player is OG and Anobi. Um Yeah. And so it would either be that or you would have to go star hunting. At the beginning of the year, I would have thought that Cat would have been one of the people that we could kind of target, but now that the two wolves are rolling, they're probably off that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he's not available. Yeah. So I guess it it's OG, it's Pascal. Um, I was trying to think of other like big name forwards that could kind of like fit with them. Like how much do you believe in, in Kyle Kuzma coming in? It's just, I would like that. I would like that a lot, actually. Yeah. The, those are, those are past- the kinds, those are the kinds of names. I just don't think that there's a big move for them at the deadline that legitimately skyrockets their, their chances to win a title oh, for sure. right now. Well, yeah. Make- skyrockets isn't happening, but there has to be yeah. a move made. They're not going to sit on their hands and, I, I do we all agree Chris Paul is probably the one that's easiest to trade? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He's the yeah, easiest, he's but also the hardest at the same time because he has a fat ass contract and it's expiring. Gonna, yeah, you're right. It's expiring, but just making it work on the books to get that transaction through, it's gonna do you have to you're gonna have to do some mad calculations. Yeah. Do you like Siakam there? Let's ask that question first. Let's go let's go realistic target by realistic target. Do you even like the fit of Siakam with Draymond Green? Because Draymond has four years left, he's not going nowhere. Um, I, do, I, do like it. I, I, I do like it. I think if I've seen what it looks like with Draymond and Kevon Looney and the fact that you can have somebody else out there who can create their own offense and who can still like who can space the floor at least more than Kevon can. That's yeah. that, that's kind of encouraging. So I would I would like it and it would be a massive upgrade in talent. Um, so that would Right now, that's the that's the number one move in my mind for them to make. Okay, is to go get. Pascal Mo, do you agree? Do we want, do we want to start there with that being the first trade? Personally, yeah, I I don't I'm not sure if I love the move, but the Warriors have to do something. Um, Pascal Siakam's not a center, so it'll be kind of interesting to see how you try to force him or Draymond to be that full time. You know, Draymond would be a center, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I like it a lot better than what they already have. Anything. All right. <laughs> Nikhil, let's pull up the trade machine. Let's figure out how to make this work. This is going to be the first step of our Warriors rebuild. He got We're getting me. Pascal Siakam on the Warriors. Let's figure out a way that makes sense for both sides. Obviously, it involves Chris Paul being the salary filler. Pascal Siakam's expiring. There's going to be bidders at the deadline. Is two first-round picks enough? Yeah. It depends that's on... Fine. That's fine. Masai Ujiri took his meds that day. <laughs> <laughs> if you were the Raptors... Would you take Chris Paul and two first-round picks for Pascal Siakam? I think that's a, an enticing trade because it depends on how deep those first-round picks are, first and foremost. But regardless of the fact, yes, because the Warriors are very clearly on the last stages of their era. And yeah. for they me, They can't this trade 2024, means, so it'll be 2026 and 2028 as the two picks traded. You should do this in a heartbeat. Because that t- at that time, Curry would be, what, 38, 39? Pushing 40? Yeah. Uh, Nikhil, you put a second round pick for 2026 and you remove those two and put the first round pick for 2026 and the first round pick for 2028. Yeah, I take that first one off too. But yeah. That I, gets us to 30 million from the Warriors and 37 million from the Raptors. Is it the second apron thing isn't already a thing, right? So can this be pushed through? Let's try it. With this year, I think I think it can. It cannot. Because the Warriors cannot complete this trade. They are an apron team. Okay, so we need to get some more money. Are you willing to send away Jonathan Kaminga as well? Yeah. See, I do that in a heartbeat. You can, there's no way lot. you can have someone like Draymond, Pascal, and Kaminga on the same team. Three player, three big forwards who are, you know what I'm saying, for the most part, non-shooters. Even though Pascal can shoot genuinely, he's just not having a great year. Uh, yeah, I, I would be more than happy than throwing for, for throwing Kaminga into this. We don't have to, though. We could also do the salary of Gary Payton. Like, do you think it takes two first-round picks and Camingo for Siakam? Pro- prob- probably. Probably. Be- just because there's still a little bit of untapped potential with Kaminga. I think that you know kind of exactly what you're getting with Gary Payton. And if you're starting over, it, like if you're the Raptors and you make this deal, you're clearly saying, I'm starting over. And so you would get the money off the books. You would have the two first-round picks in four years or i guess in in two years then in in four years let me get something that i can work with right now and see if i can turn into something so i think kaminga has to be a part of this deal okay well so if kaminga has to be a part do we try to take away one of the first round picks or add protections like 
How it's, do we, it's, it's, massive, like a lot, right? it's for, massive, though. And he is going to ask, <laughs> yeah. he is going to ask for a lot. If the, the word on the street was that he was asking for four first round picks for OG, he's going to ask for two for Pascal, whether they like him or not. That's just going to be yeah. the price. I think that's, that's great value either way. All right. Nikhil, try the trade. It looks like this is going to be the first part of a rebuild. Two first round picks. Then granted, these are the only first round picks they have to trade. So are you guys really comfortable with Siakam being your all in draft capital move? Yeah. I'm I'm com- I'm comfortable. This is yeah. this is the best okay. deal that you are going to get. What other star out there is available? I don't know. Maybe and he's not a star though. Maybe you're just going for role players that fit. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be a star. You have to get a yeah. second if if Draymond is gonna be this volatile and you don't know on a night to night basis in a playoff series, like is he gonna be able to play six to seven games every single series? I need to have somebody else on my team who I can count on. And if Clay's not going to be the guy, then Siakam has to be it. And you need like actual all star star talent. What okay. makes, yeah, what makes like these entire trade discussions a little bit more complicated in my head is that a lot of teams don't appear to be selling. And every team in the NBA, outside of maybe like four or five, aren't are like seriously trying to compete or contend for something. And the teams that will be selling soon, they haven't shown their cards just yet. And so yeah. as we speak right now, yes, I think this is the best move possible. And with that being said, you walk away with this happy. Although Pascal Siakam is a free agent. Obviously, you don't want to do this without having side conversations, DMs, or meet him at whatever speakeasy. It doesn't matter. You have to secure your future. Can't just get him, <laughs> let him walk away for no re- for no reason or for nothing. So I'd be happy with that. All right. Yeah. Question, question, question for y'all. Would you would you make a run at Lowry Marketing if you're the Warriors? See, Lauren well, we Martin. can't now. We got yeah. well, yeah, yeah, not not now, not now, but just like in the grand scheme of things, if it if it was on the table yeah. of like, should we go after Pascal? Should we make an offer to Utah for Lowry? How do you guys think that that would fit? Because that's been a name where I'm like, Utah low key can be sellers at the deadline, get some more picks. Like Keontae George looks really good. Walker Kessler is is good. Like, why don't they're we not catch- gonna trade Lowry. Lowry's their guy. He's their cornerstone franchise player. I think people want him to be traded. That's why it's a discussion. I don't really see why they you would. You think he's a personally. franchise player? Yeah, I think that's a strength. Like right untouchable there. franchise player. I mean, not, he's not. I'm not saying he's Shea Gildas Alexander, but and you're in their situation and you found an all star. He's legitimately a great player. Why would you not use that as a foundation? You know, like because they're trying to suck. win. They're like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is what gets he's out young. <laughs> he's young and he's great. Like he was drafted in 2016 it, or 2015. He's, he's been he's in the like league for like eight or, years. Yeah, he's, he's 26 thinking. years old. He's in his pre. the beginning of his prime. That's a young star. Oh, you is, is, know what this is? This is like two years ago when everybody wanted them to trade Shea because they're so young and rebuilding and people were like, he doesn't fit your timeline of a Josh Giddy or whoever, but they have an all-star in the building. That's the player you make these trades to try and find. I don't know why they would get rid of him as soon as they found him and like nurtured that star. Once For again, me personally, suck I love seven, Larry Martin. And the only reason why I'd consider giving him away is, bec- is because of the assets I know that I could get for him. And although, like, yeah, like, Lowry could be a cornerstone piece and he he's a legit all-star caliber player. We literally saw him become an all-star last year. Me, personally, if the right team gave me that, gave me an offer, threw me, say, three first-round picks, I am definitely listening. Exactly. I am definitely listening. Exactly. Everybody wants to talk about Sam Presti and the Thunder getting all these assets. Who do you think did it first? Who do you think was about <laughs> this life, about accumulating all these draft picks? Danny Ainge. Danny Ainge would do anything for a first round draft. <laughs> okay. And if the Warriors came came calling, I think they would listen. Yeah, but with that being said, I don't think the Warriors have deep enough pockets or even should consider trying to trade for Larry Martin. That's why it wasn't the first thing off in my head. Naturally, I think, yeah, like Larry's probably he's definitely obviously a better fit. He's a he's one of the best big man shooter in the shooters in the NBA right now. But that will cost them a pretty penny, and that's not worth the investment at all. Okay. Okay, so let's go through the Siakam trade. Now we're looking at a lineup of Curry at point guard, Siakam at power forward, and Draymond at center. And that leaves us still with Clay at shooting guard and Wiggins at small forward. Which Do you want to bench Clay? Is that the move, or do you guys want to try and find a trade for him? No, nah, let's bench him for right now. If we're <clears> doing <throat> stuff in season, trading Clay 
would ruin any hope of good vibes that you already that you already had. Yeah, but at the same time, while you say that, nah, your you vibes will be even worse once next year starts and you're paying him 30 35 million dollars a year that he's going to demand call so a dollar call andre iguodala get another adult <laughs> in the room and be like listen i can't i went to the bench right my career worked out pretty well clay listen we guys like you got to do it for the squad get iguodala back in the building that's honestly what they need <laughs> they, they don't have an og how do you guys feel about wiggins so obviously now we have wiggins left here that's currently going to be the small forward there's no more first round picks left only pick swaps do we want to try and trade him for another piece that isn't playing like dog water or stick with him and ride it out and hope he can get back to 2022 for him? You trade his him. ass away. Oh, word. okay. <laughs> Immediately. Don't give we're, him a chance. We're not on the same page. We're we not gotta, at all. We got to lock in. Why? Okay, what so why, why are we trading Wiggins? Bro. Okay, first and foremost, trading Wiggins for better spacing. That's what I'm thinking about. Of having Siakam, Siakam and Draymond and Wiggins two of them could easily have an off nine they're not naturally shooters they're may, their offensive game specifically siakam and wiggins they apply a lot of pressure on the rim for the most part wiggins has a bag and you can do other things for the, also but i want to get a another natural shooter who gives steph and siakam more and more than enough room to breathe oh, well, who's available that fits that mold then it's not about who's available. Who's a better? I would, I'd start Clay, and I would look for a solid role role player coming off the bench. All right, like who? Who are we, who are we looking at with the Wiggins trade? Because Wiggins, uh, in theory, good defensive wing that's incredibly valuable and hard to come by. So who are we seeing out there that's going to be a better fit that makes sense to get rid of that asset? I I don't I don't know. I that's why I just think like the upside of Wiggins is so high. That I think if you trade him, I don't I don't think you're gonna be able to get equal value, especially or like be able to still keep a core that is very very competitive right now. I think you're gonna have to give up too much, especially considering that we just got off of two first round picks and traded Chris Paul. Like all of your moves were to get Siakam. At this point, it is what it is. You just have to ride out with whatever you got. I don't think you can trade Wiggins. Yeah, it's also just tough because you don't have any picks left. So exactly, you you went all in. Unless you're gonna get rid of Moody too and keep Clay in the starting lineup, then the team gets real thin. Nah, yeah, we can't get rid of Moody. Moody, that's impossible. All right, with so, Andrew Wiggins, congratulations! You can stay in San Francisco. <laughs> you don't have to go card, anywhere. His key card is valid for another season. Yeah, it still works. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're looking at a team that has. Uh, Curry, Moody, Wiggins, Siakam, and Draymond. The bench has Clay, Sarich, GP2, Pods, and who else am I thinking of that would be on the bench? Oh, Corey Sarge. Joseph. I said Sarich. Oh, cool. Uh, Corey Joseph, and I guess that's the main rotation. Yeah. Oh, and Looney. That's what, that's what I was thinking of. So, Looney, question for you guys. Joseph. What is the goal of this rebuild? Do You, you want have to, to win the championship. Gifts? to win a championship or give him the best chance to win a championship. Yes. So yes. two different things in my opinion. How? What do you mean? Yeah, what does that mean? If you want to give him the best chance to win a championship, then you're satisfied with this lineup. If you want to win a championship genuinely, then you literally sell everything. You did. You do something like what the Los Angeles Clippers did and just empty the clip. You don't give a fuck about any clip, any picks for the future. And We if, just did. Don't we have like two leftover picks? No, we no more no. picks left to trade. I mean, okay, I think I guess in your in your scenario, we get off of the pick swaps as well, and you make another move with those. But like, if you don't have like, who are you gonna go and get? That's that's the big question. Is that if we don't have a name in mind about who's go, who we're gonna trade Wiggins and trade these pick swaps for, and see who can fix that hole, then. You might as well just stay where you are and keep your flexibility for the next two years and even for the offseason, then maybe something else happens there. I think this lineup here is good enough to where I, they can win a playoff round with this. You can compete for the conference finals. And then at that point, you just have to hope that Curry goes God mode and carries you to a finals. Okay. 
And yeah, there's, there's also there's no more first round picks to trade, so yeah. very limited flexibility left. It would have to be like a player based trade, which you don't really see very much these days. Most trades involve picks of some kind, of some type. Yeah, exactly. that's very so, true. So who are we gonna go? Who are we getting? I guess I feel comfortable with this roster, way more comfortable than what they are right now, and we did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Steph Curry, you once again have a chance. You saved yes. your career. <laughs> Sounds like yeah, Mike Dillon needs like, to bring us on the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going going all in with Siakam is just like that's your move if they have to give up that much for him because you got nowhere you got no more interesting players you, you can't trade Moody if you're gonna be benching Clay no more tradable first round picks like this is the squad and you gotta hope you can resign Siakam. Good, Damn. they are in hell. This <laughs> yeah, this isn't even that great. <laughs> this is, this is like, they are in hell. This is your this championship is team. Do you yeah? It's, that was going to be my question too. Do you think this team will win a championship or has capability? Fuck to no, themselves? no, they, they are no. not winning a championship with this. No, <laughs> fuck no. The only was there way anything they, else that the could have been the only way done. that they win a championship is if we are controlling them while playing two K. That's the only way. But if, <laughs> if this is real life basketball, a championship is not happening. Yeah, dang. So Let's, it's uh, over. <laughs> it's no, over. Cooked. We did the best we could. This is this is what this is what's on the table. Take it or leave it. Curry, you got a better chance than you did yesterday. <laughs> yeah. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. And it's all about timing in the NBA. This is what... <laughs> I wash my hands they... with it. <laughs> <laughs> we tried, brother. <laughs> Sick <Cigar's> hands. <laughs> <laughs> so that wraps up us rebuilding the Warriors. I think we can move on from rebuilds. That was fun. This is so... We have had so much talk about despair with the Warriors. I think we need to move on to another team that is in despair, of which relates especially to one of us and also brings joy to another one of us. Let's talk about the Atlanta Hawks. Let's do it. Mo, stop looking around. Stop looking around trying to they avoid suck. a question. Look <laughs> straight segment. at me. Look straight at me. All right. I was God. gaslit for months coming into the season, <laughs> talking about, oh, the Hawks are gonna be better than, than the Knicks. We might, we might be top four. That's not happening. And not only, my bad. not only am I going <laughs> to take a victory lap in December, I'm going to tell you right here, to your face, I need my money. I need my $200. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. What money? What $200? Did you not read the contract that we initially signed? It was double or nothing. Double or nothing meaning I get $200 when we come back. <laughs> you get nothing, sir. That's, that's literally not how that works. Either way. Yes, it is. No, yes, it's it not. Is. That what is literally what double or nothing means. We both put up a hundred dollars, and so I quote unquote lost. And so I'm saying double or nothing. So whoever wins this next one gets the double. <laughs> Here's the thing: no. you just don't know what double or nothing means. Yeah, that's no, what the you, problem is. You've been double or no, you've been finessed your entire life, is what that tells me. Someone <laughs> robbed your ass true. when you were younger, that's, bro. That's, that's, you that's were <laughs> that's not true. You were a hundred dollars in the hole, <laughs> so now you went double or nothing to try to get out of the hole. Which means if you win, you get nothing. Exactly. If I Get that right. <laughs> if, I, if I get my money, stop, stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do this. I need my money, okay? And I'm coming for every dollar, okay? I'm coming for every dollar. And nobody, I, listen, I was lied to for months coming into this pod. I'm not gonna be lied to right now. I need my money the next time I, I see everybody. That's not what that means. <laughs> I'm not this playing. Man, I'm not This playing. man spent a year after college working as a writer at a sports betting company, and he doesn't know how betting works. I am not. <laughs> first of all, you said double or nothing. Working. Oh my god. Okay. I'm on a real time. Note, out. I'm gonna look this up. Okay. <laughs> go y'all go. Mo, tell tell us why your team sucks. On a real note, we are ass. A S S. Two cans of ass. BBL oh type gosh. ass, humongous. <laughs> it, the type of ass that we are right now, shit seems fake. How can we get worse? <laughs> we only lost one player. We lose one player. Jalen Johnson goes down, and all of a sudden, he's the saving grace of our team. No. Y'all, though, he's fucking great. Him going down alone should not cause us to be this type of ass. <laughs> so, anyways, why are we ass? Yeah, man. It's a lot of reasons. Isaac, do you, what's the reason do you think that you think we're ass? First of all, let's tell people the context of this. As we were about to start recording, Mo had to <laughs> wait a second because he was watching the Warriors, I mean the Hawks, play against the Raptors, a team he has actively hated on since the inception of the show. 
he was like, I'm watching a Trey Young masterclass. And then 10 minutes after that, he was like, oh my God, if we lose, I'm going to go break some shit. And they yes. lost to the Raptors. Yes. A team who has been so bad. They were the reason we thought about rebuilding teams for this episode. Because they need to blow that shit up. And they beat the Hawks. And guess what else? They scored 130 on the Hawks. A bottom 10 offense in the league. So that should tell you your answer. The problem is they can't defend a fucking thing. Not a zip. Yep. Everybody's <laughs> ass. <laughs> They're Jalen Johnson's gone. They don't have that shot blocker. Clint Capella, 2019 Clint Capella is not walking through those doors. DeJounte Murray hasn't fixed the defense like people thought they would when they brought him in. Trey Young is still Trey Young. Though I did see some Hawks fans having propaganda on the timeline of the day saying his defense has gotten better. I haven't seen it, but maybe people that watch the Hawks every day have. I don't know that's, what the answer is. That's not that's not anything. That's not any real point to bring up at all. <laughs> uh, the defense is still last. You let you let the you let the Raptors drop like 130 on your head. No OT needed. Just straight up regulation. <laughs> 46, bro, 40, 48 minutes. That's not real. Uh, yeah. So there's so many things going on with this team, and all we can do, all I can do as a Hawks fan, is just is just sit down and think about where all this went wrong. And it all went wrong when Travis Slank left our team. The little he made a few errors here and there or whatever. But since he left, we have had been plagued by a terrible case of nepotism. Um <laughs> nepotism. Yeah. You got nepo babies our, running around. Yeah, yeah bro. Because our owner, his name is Tony Wrestler, and he has his son on the, in the fields making basketball decisions for us. His son That's has never good. <laughs> He has no real he has no real experience in any professional world um, in the NBA specifically. So there's that <laughs> trading for DeJounte Murray hasn't been the most beautiful outcome. I don't want to put the entire blame on him, but he is a part of why we're not that great. Um, DeJounte is the second worst player in the NBA when it comes to finishing inside the paint. He is frail. His really? game is majority <laughs> like he he does his dirty work in the mid range. And as of late in this season, he's been a fantastic three point shooter. You know, that's that's come along very well for him. But at the start of the season, he seemed great. He was, in my opinion, we're during the first five games of best player on the Hawks. But now things have been looking bleak and he's he was as of recently in a shooting slump. So his defense also hasn't been as potent and impactful as you'd like to see and then on top of that the most atlanta hawks player ever is deandre hunter he is the definition of just mid he's not complete <laughs> ass he can look good sometimes but for the most part he's just not really that impactful it can look like he's not even on the court sometimes so mm. it's a whole lot and yuck and Kongo hasn't made that leap also so mm. in my opinion this team needs to just get blown the fuck up and we need to do some deep work inside and mm. that starts with our front office serious dysfunction causes dysfunction to spread and leak everywhere. It's like a bad, bad pipe in the house. We just have terrible infrastructure. Dang, tough. This team has lost five straight games. <sighs> Coincidentally, Jalen Johnson has been out for I think eight games. They fell off a cliff as soon as he went out. We talked about it in previous episodes. He has been the one silver lining of this season for the Atlanta Hawks. He's emerging as a truly high level starter. A guy we could imagine potentially moving towards being a low-level all-star one day. Two-way player, a highly efficient scorer, one of their only good positive defenders, has legit rim protection skills. Basically, everything they suck at, he's good at. Now he's gone. So the one guy who could do these things well in this team from the forward position is no longer there. And they fell off a cliff as expected. Like, it's tough. I don't know what the answer is for them. Maybe he just blow it up like you said. And even when he was here... We were still like mid as hell. You know what I'm saying? We were still yeah. like <laughs> five and five, six and eight <laughs> type shit. You know what I'm saying? But we were like, we were at least like in the hunt of just being mid. Now we're just fucking bad, straight up ass. <laughs> keep going. That's good keep for going. No I love hearing this. Keep going. Shut I, I'm, up. I'm, I'm going to keep going. Gonna now back. I'm not talking. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> God, I hate this. Let's talk about the Knicks. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? I'm going to say about the Knicks. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, nah, yeah. <laughs> But not pilot on the Hawks. They're trash. And he's blow so okay. So from the jump, I've said it every time we talk about the Hawks. I've never once for a second believed in the Jante Murray trade. Time of making the trade, I was like, why would this be your all-in move to get a point guard to pair with your point guard? I think it's fucking dumb. Especially a point guard that isn't a particularly good shooter. Now he's gotten better. He's ha he has good shooting stats. So he's not like a non-shooter to that degree. 
But we know there's a difference between guys who can make threes and have a good percentage versus guys that actually space the floor, can come off screens, be a really effective spot-up shooter that people aren't going to help off of, come off dribble handoffs and pull up, pull up from pick and roll, all the sorts. Things that we know Trey Young is good at. He needs a guy next to him that can, at the very least, also be a shooter that has impact to, you know, be able to facilitate Trey Young's playmaking skills. Never was DeJounte Murray, never has been. I think that it's not his fault they suck, but it's his fault because that's the one all-in move they made to be not trash, and he doesn't elevate them like you'd have to be to warrant that type of uh, draft picks given up. Yeah, exactly. And what makes the situation even um, more sick, again... More has, sick. <laughs> yeah, like, again, DeJounte Murray has been as good as you could hope he could be aside of like him not being able to finish it because he's so frail um is that we are out of our 2026 pick we have a 2027 pick swap and 2028 we don't have a pick you know what i'm saying so this is the only year that we have our pick until the next three years we have no flexibility whatsoever and so <laughs> yeah <laughs> what was that? I love that? you. I love Nikhil. you. Nikhil is showing a YouTube video and he just had a crazy ad pop up that said calling all dads. <laughs> Nikhil, you know these ads are personalized to you. <laughs> I I texted him earlier when he was trying to pull up some <laughs> he was trying to pull up some highlights. I said get YouTube premium. And it was for his own safety. Because I knew <laughs> something like this was coming up. <laughs> He's being <was> exposed. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> calling all dads. <laughs> I don't know where that was He's going. a weeb with a child. That's crazy. No. <laughs> <laughs> a weeb with a child. It's crazy. Nikhil, feel free, feel free to jump on the mic and defend yeah, yourself. Yeah, explain Let's yourself. What was that? Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> it's already in 4K. You're done for. <laughs> <laughs> You're done. Yeah, it happens That's to hilarious. the best of us, man. It happens to the best of us. But Donovan. You're still here. Comment Daddy Nikhil. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. He's so mad. That's He's so mad. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> he could, the, the way he got out of that so fast is hilarious. <laughs> comment Nikhil is my dad. We're still here. <laughs> N-I-K-H-I-L. I'm dead. Man. I'm dead. But that's hilarious. Okay. Quick Mo, question. Mo, you were going to ask a question? Yeah. Donovan. What would you do to try to improve this team <laughs> um find god <laughs> find god <laughs> i mean yeah i i think i think for them you have to move off of Dejounte. um and i know that oh. you just gave him the extension but yeah, clearly it's a like team Trae Trae Young, extension too yeah and again he's he's playing well but this might be the best opportunity to trade him his his value might might be at its peak right now but Trey is obviously your franchise, and you are going to want to keep him. Jalen Johnson's um, surgeons this year, you're going to want to keep him. Whether or not you feel that Onyeka can take that eventual step, that's going to be the, the question, because if not, you can potentially move off of him to make another move, right? Maybe keep just keep rolling with Clint Capella and just give up on that experiment. But you're going to have to, you're going to, have to find people who actively improve your defense because what we've seen and we talked about this last time with the Hawks is that we've seen with Quinn Snyder led teams is that the defense is not necessarily going to be a priority. And a lot of that was covered up because you had Rudy Gobert in the, in the back end manning everything. But if you're not going to have a three time defensive player that you're doing that everybody else, it's going to have to be a personal challenge for the other guys to, to play defense because structurally they're just not going to be incentivized to do that. So DeJounte is going to have to get traded and Yaku is going to have to get traded. And a lot of your top assets are going to have to start moving and you're going to have to start getting that process of what is the next era of Hawks basketball look like? Yeah. They're just, cooked, which is yeah. tough. They're yeah. stuck in mid. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think they would need the perfect opportune star player to become available that would need a young point guard could use a can this hawks trade two draft picks or just one can they trade 2030 and 2024 uh i don't think they could trade 2030 right well they actually they can yeah they, they can. can so they could trade 2024 oh actually no the oh yeah okay yeah they have their own 2024 pick and then they had 2030 two first round picks there's murray 
if there's the perfect star available, that could get you somebody interesting. But I don't see that star walking through these doors. They don't want DeMar DeRozan. They don't want Zach Levine. Maybe they'll get you an OG and an OB. Maybe they'll get you a Pascal Siakam. But at that point, I don't think those players are good enough to get rid of DeJounte for. So you kind of stuck. Do you get rid of DeJounte for depth? That Where's is that the only you? way at this point in time. Like we Where's need that get players. You? The be- the back when we were our when we were at our best, we had just a lot of impactful players on our roster. John Collins was actually an impactful player back in 2021, and also in this current year, I don't want to disrespect him or anything. But point is, players who left a real impact on the defensive end and can lock up when shit was important. Guys like a uh, Delon Wright. I miss his ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're what down bad. I know. I'm, we were talking about DeLon Wright. We never said his name in the history of TD3. Every single video we made out of the 500 whatever videos or whatever it might be, we've never said his name. And I'm over here saying I miss DeLon Wright. I'm in the trenches. Can we please just, can we switch conversations? Bro? Fuck. <laughs> yeah, man. Listen, do, do do the Nets want him for a Dorian Finney-Smith, Royce O'Neal package of role players? <laughs> we're I would do that personally. That's... Well, I like that actually. I like that actually. That wow. frees De- Dejounte and get okay. Listen, <laughs> listen. Eight K proof right here. You don't know what you have until it's gone. That's what this is. For audio listeners, we have a tweet pulled up from at Mojo nine nine underscore. Get Delon right. These were typed in lowercase letters. Off my team, man. Typed in uppercase letters. <laughs> listen, I did not know how good I had life back then at all <laughs> <laughs> i'm so sorry for all the delon rights <laughs> that was three months that was tweeted three months after the get delon right off my team tweet <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is great listen yeah man the hawks are down bad and like it just couldn't be me like i couldn't imagine rooting for a team that didn't just win the in-season tournament that isn't a top okay. four team in the right, west playoff team, time team. that he's doesn't talk, have two superstars about that doesn't have the six man of the year that doesn't listen, have four six eight wings that can defend we're just just be me. gonna leave it at that the Atlanta yeah. <laughs> Hawks and including me, we are in purgatory. This is the this worst position to be fans. as an NBA fan. A team that's supposed <laughs> to be good, but you're genuinely ass and you gave up picks to be good. And you're not. You're ass. <sighs> Could be me. I'll say that. <laughs> God, bro. Okay. Mo, I left my watch at home. Do you know what time it is? Oh, shit. Plug just hit me. <laughs> Folks said it's TikTok time. Let's get this shit rolling. Oh, the crayon eaters in I the streets, it. they need it. They need it. I felt that shit in my chest. I knew you'd come through. <laughs> oh, man. Welcome to TikTok time. As always, we're going to begin with the draft. This time, we're going to do a lineup draft, making the biggest NBA lineups possible. One through five, <laughs> we're going to draft some massive motherfuckers, <laughs> the tallest lineups possible. This is gonna be great. <laughs> Donovan's first pick. I'm second pick. Most third pick. I got the All perfect right, spot. Donovan, Let's do it. Where are we starting? I have to go with. Listen, I could go two ways, but I want actual good players on my team. So give me Yao Ming at my center. Ooh, okay, okay. You know what? You're gonna go with height first. I'm gonna go with girth. Give me Shaquille O'Neal in my center. Damn, okay. that's good. Okay. That's good. You want to talk about big? I'm large. Okay. <laughs> You're doing a lot. I like that. <laughs> so to double up, speaking of large, just give me Zion Williamson. No one's getting through me. And then give me trade request <laughs> Harden. He's hey, trade request Harden's a different breed. We never we never seen nobody shape shift like that before, ever. <laughs> that's a good, that's a deep okay. cut. You want to okay. talk about large? You got it down. <laughs> Next pick. Ooh. You know what? Give me the ultimate size mismatch. Give me Magic Johnson at point guard. Mm. Okay. 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 You can't get bigger than that at the point guard. Okay. Listen, I'm That's still fine. going with height at my four. Give me give me the Frenchman. Give me Wemby at no, my four. I wanted him so Damn, bad. okay. You, you know like he that. was gonna be on my team. You know that. And you at seven, my seven four and seven six. <laughs> listen, and at my two guard, give me one of the most iconic big men ever. Glenn, big baby Davis. Two guard? <laughs> Woo! That's a two guard? We getting nasty big baby. here. I like yes, it. Yes, sir. <laughs> big baby is a two guard. <laughs> Listen, baseline jumpers to death. <laughs> you know what? You picked Wemby. You got me on the height. 
I'm catching up as best as I can. Give me Christoph Porzingis at the power forward. Tingus Pingus? Uh, okay. Verticality. Okay. <laughs> Verticality, I like it. Tingus Pingus is a solid pick. All right. So for me, I think I need another lengthy dude in this bitch too. Yeah, you don't go ahead. Move. Yeah, I will move Zion to the four. I go ahead and give me Taco Fall at the five. I just need someone <laughs> big. I need a tree down there because I stand no chance as we speak. <laughs> okay, Taco Fall is a hilarious cut. Yeah, give me Taco Fall and then <laughs> and then uh, ooh, you know what I could do now? Speaking of big. They call this man the round mound to rebound, apparently. Give me <laughs> Charles Barkley at the fucking three. <laughs> you are taking your team's bigness a very different direction than I am. <laughs> Listen. 100%. You, gotta you guys need to take picks. my team to a different direction. <laughs> yeah, Listen, you found a market and you're cornering it. <laughs> <laughs> I better see Raven Feld. Never mind. No, I had him on the list, but not. Nah. At the two... Give me the biggest guy who's never wanted to be big a day in his life, but he can't help it. Kevin Durant at the two. Ah, okay. Wow. That's hard. Okay. We're going the height there. Dishonest seven footer. <laughs> <laughs> dishonest seven footer is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At my three, give me the person that everybody says was Wemby before Wemby. Give me bowl bowl at my three. <laughs> Ooh. And then okay. at my one, I need somebody who can go up against most team, right? I need a big body at the one. Give me Kenny Lofton Jr. <laughs> oh, your team is hard. Let's go. I have a perfect mix of big and big. Your team, your team so has you a go deep big bag big. for no reason. <laughs> your team is cooking. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, bro. Who is stopping Kenny Lofton full force? Full speed Kenny Lofton? Sounds He's like gonna a hospital kill magic. <laughs> Back in the hospital. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny Lofton, Yao Ming pick and rolls is insane. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm going for the tallest person I can possibly find East position while maintaining some realism. Give me another seven footer, Lowry Markkinen. Okay. 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 I got height. <laughs> Respect, Lowry. You know, you got height, <laughs> but you have no serious weight on, on your team other than Shaq. You got one big boy. It's a lot of weight. I got four, <laughs> soon to be five. You're going to be put in the hospital, in the ER. <laughs> Go ahead and give me current day Mike Bibby. You guys ain't going through <laughs> shit. I am bulletproof, man. That's Are you kidding pick. me? Current day Mike <laughs> Bibby. He is a Swole. unit. I could have my entire <laughs> team not only play basketball, but I could have them cook for me. I could have them be my security <laughs> guards. I could, I could have them do anything for me, and I'm straight for life. <laughs> you just drafted a bouncer as your point guard. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> <laughs> These teams are hilarious. Man. I feel I like we need six men. I feel like we can get bigger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mo, pick a six man. <laughs> oh, man. Hold on. We, we want a six man? We can, you want to get big? Give me Michael Sweeney, 350 pound big back baby Bubba. He is the unit. I need him on my team. I need him on my team. <laughs> He's the one. He is the one. He's the ultimate mismatch. You have Shaq. He ain't seen no Sweeney before in his life. Here we go. <laughs> He's a truck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who that is. <laughs> Look him up. To your research, Big Bag Baby Bubba. That's what I call it. <laughs> Big Bag Baby Bubba. What is that? <laughs> Nothing's popping up. I don't know who this man is. You don't know who it is? Oh my God, are you crazy? <laughs> Who's Michael Sweetie? How do you spell this? Hold on, let me say G, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. Who is that? There you go. Now, Mo, Mo has a squad. Mo has a, he has yeah, a squad. Bro. He's a former New York Knicks, averaged three points and two and a half rebounds per game. <laughs> Unit. <laughs> At his peak point, uh, he was two, 348. He's a unit. <laughs> <laughs> Am I six man? I'm all team length this episode. Give me more length. Give me the <laughs> Sean Bradley. <laughs> okay. 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 That's good. That's Don't seven that four. Nice. That's length, right? That's, that's length. Four. You clearly, 
Yeah, listen. Have you clearly have a style of basketball that you want to play, and I like that. All right? <laughs> and my sixth man. Give you better me, pick who I think you're picking. You, you don't know who I'm picking. I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> and my sixth man. Give me Bryant Big Country Reeves. This man <laughs> was seven feet, 290 units. I need Big Country on my team. Big Country. That's a deep oh my cut for goodness. Young big Country? Big it's Country. Tough. It's tough. I imagine, I imagine you didn't pick Boban. Oh, Boban. No. Nah. Man, you, oh, you yeah. pick Boban would have been hard. Boban would have been hard. If it was me, uh, Donovan, I would have picked Simbular. I would have gone real nasty. Well, it was between <laughs> it was between Big Country. <laughs> it was between Big Country and Manute Bowl to have the to have the father son. But I just needed uh, a Big Country uh, nickname. Manute Bowl would have been. That's tough hilarious. Too. So my team: Magic Johnson, Kevin Durant, Larry Markman, Tingus Pingus, Shaq, and Sean Bradley. <laughs> nice <laughs> length. <laughs> All right, my team, I have Kenny Lofton Jr. at the one, <laughs> Big Baby Davis at the two, Bo Bo at the three, Wimby at the four, Yao Ming at the five, Big Country, Bryant Reeves at the six, man. Okay. Now, nah, this is nice. large. That's tough. That's tough. None of your team has a chance to get through my team and any figure of life that you think can think of. I got current day Mike Bibby, trade request Harden, Brown Mound of Rebound, Charles Barkley, Zion, Taco Fall, and Big <laughs> Back Baby Bubba Michael Sweet. We moving out here. <laughs> Big this back is the most baby. unhinged draft I've ever fucking seen. Yeah. Oh my God. I think, honestly, <laughs> Donovan might have the most well rounded team. He has, you have a bunch of sticks. Bro, I have Big Baby at the two. Like, let's. <laughs> You have Big Baby at the two, but you also have Bobo <laughs> and Yao Ming. Who got range? I, <laughs> Big Baby at the two. <laughs> Listen, on defense, on defense, I we're running the zone. And Bobo, Wemby, and Yao Ming, they're just going to hold hands around the three-point line. We're playing a diff- you're, y'all playing a different type of defense. Innovative. I like it. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> I got Big Baby at the two. And shit well around. <laughs> 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 He's just rounded. <laughs> scammer, uh, scammer of the year. Oh my god, that's hilarious! I thought wow, we were drafting good. like realty. <laughs> this is a real. This team. is never gonna happen. <laughs> no, get the spice Adam shorts on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he's wearing the same shorts I'm wearing right now. <laughs> <laughs> and he's fucking six, six, seven. Good god. <laughs> Oh now, my god. Six seven we're we're in five inch seam shorts. It's ridiculous. <sighs> he thinks he's Drewski. <laughs> <laughs> we should have dropped the Drewski. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh shit. That's good. <laughs> All right, time out. Next video. Uh, <laughs> we're get crazy. <sighs> Next thing we're gonna do. I don't even know where to take it from here. I'm fucking trying to recover. <laughs> Mo, you want to say, oh, Mo, say your team for the audio listeners real quick before we move on. Oh, yeah. Again, for the audio listeners, my team is current day Mike Bibby, trade request Harden, <laughs> Charles Barkley, mound round and rebound, of course. At the four, <laughs> Zion Williamson, five, Taco Fall, and sixth man is Michael Sweeney, a.k.a. Big Back Baby Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, next thing we're going to do. Man, let's just keep it all funny, Mo. Let's keep the laughs rolling. Next thing we're going to do. We're going to look at some NBA moments, and we're going to decide from 1 to 10 how funny it was. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the NBA legit is like the funniest league in the world. There's just something Fact. stupid happening every night. <laughs> well, this is Mo's host. Well, why don't you show us these moments? It's going to be a classic. Man. Rate how funny these NBA moments are from a scale of 1 to 10. All right, so number one is Kyrie flicking off Boston Celtics fans <laughs> during his return. <laughs> I don't even think I've ever seen this. Actually, this is amazing. Really, you never seen this? <laughs> I think I missed this. This was no. The day he this stepped was unlucky. This was great. This was this oh, was yeah, hilarious. He's lucky. All the Boston fans and everything that they always say. This was this was fantastic. And to do it so discreetly and just like, oh, I'm stretching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Got to get ready for the inbounds. <laughs> no, this is this is great. I give this like an eight. It's not. Yeah, I give it a good eight. Yeah. The best it's, part is they deserve it. You know this is given to a group of people that 100% deserve whatever they got. So this, there's no doubt in my mind these Boston Celtics there's no doubt in my mind these Boston Celtics fans deserve both middle fingers. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, this wasn't even that discreet. Kyrie was on one since he woke up, bro. He he was running around the arena that day. Go, he was spreading incense oh, around yeah. everywhere, bro. Sajin. Stomped on Lucky. He was ready for this. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. Now he chose chaos that morning. Eight, eight it is. What's next? <laughs> next up, we got the time the Denver Nuggets mascot passed out. Mid air during this <laughs> during this moment, bro. They brought okay. him down. Security had to check on his ass. He was gone. <laughs> this is this is funny for a couple reasons. One, this has to be in the job description that you can handle stuff like this, right? <laughs> they asked you about this in the interview, and you lied to their face that you cannot handle this. Two, the kids in the crowd had to be so scared. And just like <laughs> Rocky died, he's bro, dead. Bro, body limped in a motherfucker. I, if I'm a kid, I'm, witness, I'm I'm thinking, did I just witness a public lynching? Like, what's going on here? Did I just witness a man get hanged? Good God, I can't believe you took it there. <laughs> it looks like it hanging from the top. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. This is just crazy. I would be mortified if I was a child there. <laughs> this is the seven. As an ad kid, I'd be horrified. As an adult, I'm crying laughing at all the kids that were scared. <laughs> yes. I don't care. This was my I would, favorite I mascot. Would have to cover, I would have to cover my kid's eyes. And just be like, yo, don't leave. <laughs> don't leave. <laughs> and I'm doing it. I'm covering it up. And I'm like. <laughs> 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 You're fucked. <laughs> You're fucked. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, we got a seven. Seven, okay, cool. What do you rate this, Donovan? I'll go eight. These these are all very funny. <laughs> uh, this has got to be a ten to me, man. <laughs> but what's next? <laughs> and next up, we got Draymond Green slapping the shit out of Yusuf Nurkic. You know, this would be funny. But I'm at the point, this man is just a serial <laughs> assaulter. I'm just like sick of it. It's not funny anymore. It's irritating. He deserved that suspension 100%. <laughs> Listen, I think in the moment last night, it was it was annoying. 24 hours later, I'm crying. <laughs> this is hilarious. He literally <laughs> just can't stop himself from assaulting somebody. He just got home. He just got off of parole. <laughs> and he's a repeat offender. He, is, he has an addiction it's to in, molly whopping. He Yo. sees he sees a face, a punchable face, and his hand just starts talking to him like the green goblin. Like, you know you want to do. It. You know you want to slap him. <laughs> like, you can't help it. The best part is you're right, because all Nurgit did was slightly tug his jersey in the post. <laughs> And he was like, nope, helicopter mode. warrants a fucking molly whop to the face. He's it's crazy. Snaps. He has no self-control. I, I cannot believe the lengths that he will go to to put his hands on somebody. This is a 10. <laughs> he is, is the CEO of crashing out. This is what he does. <laughs> Add this to he the highlight this daily. It's a 10. <laughs> it's a 10, bro. <sighs> what do you think this is, Isaac? Absolute 10. Clean sweep. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Glad we're on the same page. What's next? <laughs> next up, Michael Beasley rubbing Anthony Tolliver's knee. <laughs> Ted, Ted, I've never seen a look of pure shock the way Anthony Tolliver was when he realized what the fuck was going on. He took a second to be like, am I imagining it? <laughs> this motherfucker touching my knee. <laughs> How long? <laughs> How long do you have to rub somebody else's knee before you realize, <laughs> hey, I don't feel anything? Like, <laughs> you know. before you start getting nervous, it's like, is everything okay? Like, I don't feel my <laughs> knee at all. The only, the only logic Am I behind that is paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> No thoughts upstairs, just vibes. <laughs> Bro, he was high as a bitch that day. That's the only logic behind this. <laughs> Everything just feels a little bit slower. So it makes sense. <laughs> Absolute 10. Yeah, this is a 10. What's next? <laughs> All right. The time when Rudy Gobert touched everything in Costco COVID the next day. Man, this is, is this not funny? funny. This man spread COVID to the whole NBA. <laughs> we can't. He shut down the world. <laughs> Oh my god. No, this is hilarious. I don't care. The <laughs> know what's funny about this? He thought he was hilarious. <laughs> this yeah. isn't just like bad, immoral. It's a bomb joke. There's nothing funnier than someone making a joke that doesn't land and he thinks he's the funniest one in the room. Next thing you know, he almost killed Donovan Mitchell. 
<laughs> don't be facts, bro. <laughs> I know. Donovan Mitchell was ready to kill him over it, too. <laughs> Oh, it ruined been. his relationship with Donovan Mitchell. It led to Donovan Mitchell requesting a trade. This is it was already bad. Said, as that soon was as I finish this coffee. chicken noodle soup, as soon as I get healthy again, <laughs> I'm coming for you, Rudy. <laughs> Donovan Mitchell was drinking Gatorade for three days, just pissed, <laughs> ready to kill this Frenchman. <laughs> I give it a three. Ten. Easy, easy ten. No, ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. All yep. right. Okay, I agree. Staple it. Staple it. <laughs> <laughs> is that the last one? Yeah. We're good. That's hilarious, man. I love that we got, we got both the funny ones out the way immediately. Set the energy off right. Hope you're all enjoying this TikTok time. If you are, do us a favor. Drop a like and subscribe on this video if you're watching on YouTube. If you're on audio platforms, leave us five star, drop a review. Let's keep this shit going. Roll the next thing we're going to do, we're going to transition to some basketball talk. We're going to go do a tier list now. And it's going to be a tier list of every version of the Los Angeles Lakers over the years. So there's championship teams. Teams that got put together to try and win a championship and flopped. Middle of the road teams. Just every version of Lakers I could think of that were interesting to talk about. We're going to tier list them. Here we go with that Lakers elitist stuff. Can't stand <laughs> Listen, they get the clicks. People like looking <laughs> at them. <laughs> so real simple. Let's put every version of the Los Angeles Lakers into a tier list. First off, the 2001 Lakers. This oh, is, this is S. This is an S tier version of the Lakers. 100%. Yeah. This is an S tier version of anybody. Yeah, this True. is through the three P. There's no reason to put them below an S. They yeah, lost exactly. one game, all playoffs. Yeah, this is S tier. Probably the best Lakers team in history. So it's a no brainer to go to S tier. Wow, in history, is that big That's, statement. Yeah. Listen, we'll get to, we'll get to some more options. We'll see if you can refute that. Next up, the 2020 Lakers. This is a solid A or B tier. I'll probably comfortably say B tier though. Nah. Yeah, it's A tier for a lot of teams, but the Lakers have a lot of heavy hitting teams, so maybe B tier for their standards. I understand that, but given everything that was going on in 2020, the fact that they overcame the pandemic, they they ho- they were hooping in the bubble, they overcame the loss of Kobe. Like sentimentally, this feels like a very big Lakers team, so I have to put it A. Okay, damn, they defeated grief and the coronavirus in one year. Give it to them, A. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> grief and the coronavirus. <laughs> That's basically a 3P if you think about it. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> not too much, not too much. <laughs> the 2004 Lakers. Oh, okay. So they did make the finals, but they lost, they but they lost in embarrassing fashion and were a, they were, they were a disappointment. So, Deeply disappointing team. They're supposed to be better than the 3P teams. They added two washed up superstars, but still good quality role players. Expectation with championship or bust. This can't be up higher than B. No, I would say C. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's tough. Loki D. <laughs> I don't know for their standards. D, Initially, D for I was thinking D. Because D for disappointment. You're cooking. Yeah, exactly. D's, D only makes sense when you have such an illustrious franchise like the Lakers do. Exactly. It's championship or bust almost every year. <laughs> this was a bust. Next up, 1985. Peak of showtime. Put this in S. Uh, it's definitely better than 2020, right? Yeah, it can't be in the same tier as 2020. Why not? We should only put 20, we should only put 2020 back into B. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can this team can peak Showtime be in the same caliber as 2001? Absolutely, I think so. If 2020 is A, they have to be in S tier along with 2001. I think they just yeah, have they to be A tier though. I think well, then we got to move 2020 to B. I think 2020 belongs in B. That's fair. Why? <laughs> They're not showtime, man. It's peak showtime. They beat the Larry Bird Celtics in this year. The Lakers, I understand. Bro. I don't, I don't This know. is I NBA just, history we're talking about here. The the fact that the Lakers, like Isaac said, they beat grief and the coronavirus. <laughs> I think that they have to be A. Okay, then Showtime's S. No. There's other versions of Showtime oh that are S. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, Mo, do you agree? 2020 down to B? 2020 definitely should be to B. Donovan, just the other day I heard you saying this was a Mickey Mouse ring. Make up your mind. <laughs> Pick a side. Listen, I'm trying to do stuff for, for clicks right now, all right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll put that, we'll put that down fine, to B. We'll fine, keep showing no, we'll time we'll go B. We'll go B. There, there we go. go. That's fair. <laughs> Next up, the 2018 Lakers. Young <laughs> rebuild. 
F. Ooh, this has is a mean <laughs> F tier. Lonzo Ball doesn't move you? F for fun. <laughs> they, were, they, they were a fun team, right? But they sucked. So we're going to put them in F. F it is. <laughs> Can't argue. <laughs> Trash. Next up, 1972, when they won with Wilt. Who? Ooh. uh what b tier can we put them in a what b you lost for like eight years in a row it's about time you won a championship (laughs) (laughs) the math game at that point you're bound to get one eventually (laughs) it's just a numbers game at that point put them in b yeah we can go b okay yeah it's not on the sheer level of dominance of showtime of winning multiple championships in the era they had to win one. There was like four relevant teams in the league that year. Exactly. <laughs> Damn, Stop so being Mickey a Mouse tier. <laughs> Mickey Mouse ring tier, is that what we're saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next up, 2011. Oh, 2011. This, when listen, they failed with Dwight Howard. Yeah, this, this is has to nasties. be This has to be an F tier. Nah, yeah. it can't be F. Nah, they were Why? not as bad as... They were no, not it has as bad to be F. It has to it be F. Be F. It wow. has to be F. D is an all-time failure for them, but they still made the finals. This team got bounced in the first round. This team, be F tier. this team forced Kobe Bryant to tear his Achilles because they were that <laughs> bad, and he had to play too much. No, it's F. Bro, there were remember that Sports Illustrated cover when they traded for Steve Nash and Dwight Howard? People thought they were going to win four chips in a row. That was supposed to be the team. Absolute Damn. failure. Uh, well, considering the context, so, yeah, that is true. They were the next super team. Yeah, they're supposed Yuck. to compete with the Heels. They didn't compete with anything. They competed with the Bobcats. <laughs> <laughs> next up, <laughs> the 2006 Lakers when Kobe was on his own. Oh, this Dang, was, listen, it's a lot of F. Kobe was a demon. <laughs> it's Kobe a lot of a F in here. here if you're not winning, if you are not in the finals, you are an F for the Lakers. <laughs> That's just the standard. I don't make the rules up. Yeah, Fair but enough. the year Kobe had alone moves me like a bitch. <laughs> Can we go D with them? <laughs> Personally, no. I put him in B. I mean, D, no. my bad. Fam, they can't go D, just repeat Kobe? They had Smush Parker and lost in the first round. <laughs> smush, we can't put Smush Parker. We can't put... I can't not say those words. That's just a tongue twister. We cannot put Smush Parker above F tier. He has to be there. That's where he belongs. <laughs> all right let's put him in f <laughs> <laughs> all right next up we got two more the 2009 lakers the championship with pow the first one. Oh, this is now this, this is, so is a b tier championship is it's that ring. that's that the magic. worse than that's the that magic. seems worse than the 2020 yes, yes. can they be c tier there's no c tier right now could they be? i i don't i don't can I, it, I don't think you said championship or bust. So every team that's not in the finals is F tier. I feel like C should be the lower tier championship teams. Hmm. If D is losing the finals, F is not make the finals. C is win the finals, but be less impressive than every other version. All right. That's fair. That's fair. We can put him in C. If this is the keep me out of this, I don't want to put him in B. Nostalgia is kicking my ass right now. (laughs) Now you were 10 years old. Hype. I don't know. You remember it fondly. Hell yeah. <laughs> I was living a bitch. <laughs> I was like, this is why he's the GOAT. <laughs> Four rings. <laughs> or five. Yeah. There we go. Five rings. Sorry, bubble, bubble AD moves me more than Pau Gasol. I know everybody hates it when I say that on TikToks, but it's true. <laughs> you don't know ball. <laughs> <laughs> Comments are my facts. Most right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're pandering to the fans. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, last but not least, this year, 2023 Lakers. Thief. We got to put them in C. Your starting point. They have a championship. <laughs> they have an they, in-season tournament title. If you have oh, a title. Gross. <laughs> I'm, like, <"Yo." laughs> I'm sorry. A uh, banner is going to hang because of this year's team. So Logic's logic. It checks out. <laughs> I'm just trying ISP. to be consistent. <laughs> put this team above Shaq and Kobe put this team above everybody else below them C tier <laughs> <laughs> I love it uh, Gary ISTs Payton eat your like heart that. out <laughs> okay <laughs> love it this is the tier list S tier we got 01 
A tier, we got 85. B tier, 2020, 1972. C tier, 2009. And this year, <laughs> D tier, 04. And the bottom feeder is an F. I think we did a good job. I like this. It's okay. I'm proud. It's, it's all right. We did good. Hater. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. All right, man. That concludes that. <laughs> Next thing we're going to do. Something we haven't done in a few weeks. Another old versus new. A staple of TD3 TikTok time. Fighting and against time nostalgia. Exactly. This time we're going to throw back to the original topic that started old versus new. NBA logos. So, you know how it goes. I'm going to show you two NBA logos. One old, one new. You tell me which one was better. First off, the Toronto Raptors. Come on now. The old come, come sweeps. On now. And it's it not it even the old. The, yeah. The, the Raptors you know, Keep in mind. It, it's good still. Keep in mind, it's not the jersey. It's just the logo. Separate the iconic jersey. Is the logo itself better? Separate it or not, the logo itself is still better. The color scheme is impeccable. And plus, you have yeah, a the fucking purple. Raptor. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> we got we got a little claw on a ball. We got a little we got a little No, listen, the basketball <laughs> the basketball in the middle and just the words around it, that's lazy. That's modern. It stuff. is generic. No. We need give, give me some character, right? Give me some personality in your logo. That's what the old one has. So I'm going Yeah, I'm and going the purple is strong. They definitely need to bring purple back at some point. Yeah, it's a staple. I don't know what they why they went away from it. I don't know. Anyway, old sweeps. Next up, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves. Old sweeps again, god damn it. That wolf. Really? Yeah, yeah, the new wolf just seems so... He don't feel like a wolf. He feels like a chihuahua. <laughs> he's not even a howling. A chihuahua. He's, yeah, he's not even a howling <laughs> at all. The, the, the old logo, though, that moves me. That reminds me of he's KG. Like that just reminds me of some... Ah! Can't even describe it. It's just hard. <laughs> just, just okay, this man, you, you were passionate about this logo. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. I like just it. Just ferocity. You know? yeah. It's staring, it's it's staring me dead in the eyes. It makes you feel something. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I you feel something listen. a lot more impactful than I feel, <laughs> but I'll give it to you. <laughs> listen, if you are just rolling with just the basketball in the middle, I think you're kind of boring. I think you're leaning on a crutch and you're not being as creative as you actually can. So I'm going with the old one. The trees is a nice touch. It's definitely more unique than the basketball, so I understand that. Absolutely. Old sweeps again. Next up, the cat, the, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Okay, this is a little closer. <laughs> this is a middle. I could also lean either way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They've never had good logos. Yeah, the the net V, the netted V is actually kind of cool, but other than that, this logo has no character. <laughs> That old that '90s logo sucks. I'm not gonna lie to you. It doesn't I'm suck. I'm just like, nostalgia thus far. That shit sucks. It's like the orange is even quality. Is the that. orange is nice. But we're just putting a C. <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> a simple it. C. That's it. <laughs> it's a pointy C. It looks like a, like a hook or a sword from from a cavalier. What is a cavalier? I don't know what that is. It's like a like a sword fighter or like an explorer. Ah, oh, that's why. Some dude with a blade. I don't know. These are both kind of ass now I'm thinking about Listen, it. Listen, for the first time in old versus new history, both L's. They both yeah. <laughs> Nobody wins. I agree. That's hilarious. We're fence sitters over here. Trash on trash. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> nice. I love this. <laughs> they know who Where they are, are and they stick to their roots. This... I'm not going to lie to you. This new one is trash. Give me the old. Really? I think the complete opposite. The bowl looks ugly as fuck in the old and the new one. You're going old? Yeah. You fucking love nostalgia. You'll pick anything from your childhood. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Bozo. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. The Utah Jazz. You know we hate the whole new era of Utah Jazz colors. Uh, dang it. We hate the whole new era of the Jazz's colors jerseys logos all of it the old one sweeps clears dominates it every adjective possible what's even the redeeming quality of this new one it's horrendous it, like i don't even know i can't even fathom the words to explain how basic and boring and uninventurous this is when you put them side by side like this it's honestly offensive to jazz fans i'm gonna say it the new one is not that bad 
No, ah, go to hell. Boo. <laughs> go to hell. <laughs> it's, it's just black. It's like they don't even have the jazz colors. I, I feel like this feels like an incompleted <laughs> Disney Channel logo. Like, you know how they used to have the one just like this Disney Channel. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this just feels like a very lazy duplicate of that. So I'm definitely going to go new for sure. Or old for sure. <laughs> that was the same way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, old right too. Side it's not history. even close. Old but it's not that bad. The jazz, have one of the, the jazz have one of the best 90s logos out there. This was not even a thought for me. 100%. It's historic. All right, next up, we have the Houston Rockets. Okay, now this one's tough because if you put this, if you put the new logo versus the one in the middle, this actually is an upgrade. But they're both kind of like mid. I like the colors on the old one, so I'm going to just go with that one. The colors on the old one, old one are definitely dope. The general style of the new one is just very plain. It's just like... Bro, another basketball gray. in the middle. What is we doing? Are the colors better on the old one? Yeah, Those Ronald McDonald has colors. I kind of like black and red. It, it works. It works, but it could have been done so much better. <laughs> you have black and red, and this is what you do. Waste of potential. That's also this isn't the this isn't the best Rockets logo we're going against. This one's kind of plain too. But it's the font of the Rockets is on the old one is better than the font on the new one. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. I Believe disagree. It or not. Maybe this is mid all I guess. Around. I hate both of them now. <laughs> now that you point out the font, this is ass. I'm going new one. <laughs> I'm going. But old. I'm still going old. All right. Next one. The Seventy Sixers. The Syracuse Nationals. Was was this a baseball team? Ew. <laughs> <laughs> this definitely looks like a single A baseball team from the sixties. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. They lost. <laughs> they lost. Yeah. Even, you know, they don't even if stand it a comes chance. from the 50s or the 60s, you know what we do on this pod. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Shout this, out to the 1950s. Exactly. This is from 1950, exactly. <laughs> exactly. The new one wins. This is the give it. Just give yeah, it this, first, this old logo is from before they invented spray cheese. I'm not big in this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were a fan of spray this, cheese like that. To where it's a marker of history. <laughs> 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 uh, Say pre spray, post spray. <laughs> he is a man. This of industrial cheese. revolution has a logo. No, thank you. Looks like you're playing in a cornfield. Give <laughs> me <laughs> the new one easily. Uh, yeah, the new sweeps. All right, that's the end of that video. Next thing we got, I'm going to transition a little bit and I'm going to quiz you guys on your NBA knowledge. Uh, see how many see. facts you can memorize. And uh, specifically, we're going to talk about how many championships these NBA franchises have won. Okay, okay. Let's let's get going. I'm trying to try yeah, and get this trivia do it. back. So what I'm we're going to do is I'm going to name two day. NBA franchises, and you guys tell me who has won more championships. Let's do Sound it. good? Sounds good to me. Okay. First matchup. The, the, uh, I can't talk. The Golden State Warriors or the Chicago Bulls? Ding, 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 ding. I want to buzz in. I, got- yeah, listen. Wait, also, are Mo and I competing against each other? Yes. Okay, bet. Okay, cool. So I so <laughs> the the Chicago Bulls have six and the Golden State Warriors have five. So I'm going with the Chicago Bulls. Uh, Mo, is that your answer? Yeah, that was gonna be my answer too. Neither one of y'all know shit. The Golden State Warriors have seven. Ah how do they have seven? Oh, because they're so the, confidently wrong. They got the, the Philadelphia ones, right? Those don't count, god damn it! But I guess they do in the context of this TikTok. Shit. L. <laughs> damn. Zero to zero. Next matchup. You're over one. The Pistons or the Miami Heat? All right, let me go first. So we did witness the Miami Heat win one with Shaq and D Wade, of course, and then they won two more with LeBron. Don't even buzz in. I see. I'm Wade. buzzing in. No, 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 no. With that being said, I'm, buzz- I'm, I'm buzzing in. Miami Heat. I'm buzzing in first. Wasn't in first. Go ahead. This is a tie. They both have three. I have no, no idea how much the Pistons have, bro. <laughs> I'm going Miami. Just know that. <laughs> They've won like five games in two years. I'm going Miami. <laughs> Just off a of recency <laughs> bias alone. <laughs> Listen, one in doubt, side with Pat Riley. But this time, Donovan is correct. It is a clean tie. Ew. <laughs> That's so shameful. <laughs> yes, sir. Miami, what are you doing? <laughs> Poor company. Get on it, man. <laughs> All right, next matchup: the San Antonio Spurs or the Philadelphia 76ers Oh, now this 
You would assume it's tough, but definitely I'm going with the Philadelphia 76ers. It's a very old team. Yeah, old. I agree. They've been around for a minute. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go with the San Antonio Spurs. Mm, why? Because Mo picked the Sixers and I, I need a point. So <laughs> give me the San Antonio Spurs. <laughs> Terrible reasoning, but you're correct. The San Antonio, uh, the San Antonio Spurs have five and the 76ers have three. Ha! What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm shook. <laughs> Will he ever get a point? Who knows? <laughs> Tune in. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we got the Los Angeles Lakers versus the Boston Celtics. Oh yeah, this is easy. This is this is the Los Angeles Lakers. That was very quick. I was very confident. Yeah, they just wanted they just wanted to chip in twenty twenty. True, it's neck and neck. I believe right, it's down to eighteen. I'm buzzing in. I think this is a tie. I think they're tied right now. Really. Yes, because I think, I think they're tied because I remember. May, I'm, listen, I'm probably just lying to myself. I'm just gonna guess it's a tie, and that's <laughs> that's my answer. Once again, bad logic, but you're correct. This is a tie at 17. What? Oh my god, bro! I thought it was 17 to 18. My calculations is wrong. You were counting the in season tournament. You're already hanging another banner. <laughs> That should have counted. What the hell? <laughs> I got that cheated. That is not a Larry O'Brien trophy. <laughs> it's close enough. <laughs> Fuck that. Actually, it's even better. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one, only one in existence. Exclusivity means it's more valuable. Counts as like five Larry O'Bees to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Next up, the Knicks versus the Cavaliers. Two old franchises. <laughs> you know, now we're in the trenches. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm buzzing in right here. This actually isn't that hard. The Cavs only have one title. That's LeBron's. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. They but don't have oh. one. Oh, oh, oh. They won another one like 55 or I know. whatever years ago. The Knicks have two. What am you know I going to do? What am I I'm going to go ahead and say, for the first time in history, I'm going to go ahead and side with the New York Knicks. I'm siding with the Knicks as well. Ah, Correct. Two to one, the Knicks win. I should have kept my mouth shut. God damn it. I let him go. With the <laughs> fuck. <laughs> and because uh, we tied, nobody gets a point. So Mo still has no points. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just how it works. I should get an extra two because you hopped on my back. I can't. Hey, double or nothing. <laughs> All right, next one. The Thunder versus the Bucks. Seattle. The okay, Super okay. Somebody okay. talk. <laughs> okay, I know. I know. I, know. I, I had they to do think, shit? I had to think out loud. We're counting the whole franchise though, right? Correct. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you have to think back to the Supersonics. But even then, I'm, I'm buzzing in. I'm going to take the Milwaukee Bucks. Donovan? I mean, Mo? Yeah, I... Oh, oh man, that's God. crazy. You know what? You took a point from me, bitch. I'm taking one from you. Give me the bucks as well. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. The bucks have two to the Thunder's one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I see the gamesmanship. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the end of that. Y'all know trivia a little bit. I get it real easy. Next week, we'll up to Auntie and do harder trivia. Nice. I want to keep it entry level for this week. Nice. Last thing we got. This is going to be a fun one. We've been talking a lot lately about the best players in franchise histories for different teams. Now we're going to transition a little bit and we're going to talk about current players and it, whether or not they have the opportunity to become the franchise's GOAT by the end of their career. Projection. <coughs> okay. Yeah, like, would y'all expect that to be the case? Let's do okay. it. So, can this NBA player be their franchise's GOAT at the end of their career? First off, Luka Doncic. In order to be the franchise's GOAT, this man has to win a ring. MVPs, I'm assuming we all agree he'll do that sometime throughout his career. But winning that ring is going to be tough when you have the Dallas Mavericks front office yep. in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that 2011 ring is a tough hill to overcome. But also, he might just have like 12 first-team All-NBAs by the time you're 32. So I'll, kind of, I'll be shocked if he doesn't become the franchise's GOAT, honestly. He, he should be. He has to win a ring or else he's not the GOAT. That's just that's just simple play. Also, Dirk played like two decades with the Mavericks. Yeah, true. Said if he dips out early, Dirk's Dirk's their guy. And they can always lean back and be like, he was the one. 
Yeah, yeah, nobody stays around that long anymore. And he doesn't even have like a championship nucleus that we can see him contending with for the next decade. Loki, I think it's probably pretty likely he leaves. I'm going to go no, actually. He can't be the GOAT because he's going to leave. I'm going to say no. Damn. I guess I'm going uh, to go against y'all, actually. I'm going to say yes. He's going to be the Knicks GOAT when he requests a trade in a couple of years. <laughs> that would be insane. <laughs> I am moved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, Joel Embiid. No. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> if he Hell was to be nah. the GOAT, he would literally Hell have to win nah. a championship this year, next year, and the year after that, along with a couple of MVPs. <laughs> Hell no. <nah. laughs> Nothing? Dr. J has two chips. Dr. J has two chips. He has MVPs of his own. Joel and B got to start racking up some, some rings. And he's yeah, not nah. going to do it. With Tobias Harris as your third best player? I'm sorry. Not in the year 2023. So is he better than AI? <laughs> is he a better sixer than AI? I mean. Yeah. Person. He, Hard yeah. to have that conversation with the nostalgia factor, so I'll leave that for another day. <laughs> God, Regular season eight. player for sure. Playoffs? I don't know. Listen, they both got one MVP. Who's to say for sure? Yeah. It's my hate but that next up. Yeah. <laughs> next up, Trey Young. <laughs> no, just off of this picture. <laughs> <laughs> what? Just this is a horrible picture. picture. Why does he look like this? He What's wrong with this picture? He's just a regular <laughs> light skinned mixed man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, but I don't. I don't think so. The only if one in his way three years is... ago, maybe I would have said, "Okay, he's on the trajectory." I'm way past thinking Trey Young is gonna be like some superstar. Well, uh, I'm not the hard. It's I don't think it's <laughs> hard to surpass someone like Dominique Wilkins with how talented he is. Now he has less time on his hands. He's 25 years old now, and he's only went to the conference finals once, which is still impressive. But he has a chance. I'll say he has a chance still. Hawks fam, has got to get they, his act together. Get there. Fam, they expanded the playoffs and he's about to miss the play in. No, he's not <laughs> going to be the goal. <laughs> Look, you said that last year. He ain't going to miss it this year again. Relax. Congratulations on the 10th seed. He's going to earn it. <laughs> Listen, they're out the play in right now. You guys are 11. Listen, this TikTok Tough. from the age is like, want, like tr- milk. They're going to be in the play in. Relax. Okay. We have a there one. All right. Next one. Devin Booker. Maybe. Better than Steve Nash? Shit, I'm with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's Charles true. Barkley? I forgot, I forgot about Steve Nash. Yeah. Mm. No, he no, he has to win MVPs. Yeah. At least he one. Was you, At least one. He's already made a finals. What if he makes another finals? I don't know. That's tough. That is tough. He's going to have more postseason success than Steve Nash. I think that's pretty safe. For sure. He'll be there for longer. Does it have to be MVPs or bust? I think he has to be one. Really? Well, okay. Actually, no. no, uh, Here's Okay. You are right. If he gets to another finals, then I think we can kind of like dip off. Level up the playing field. Yeah. Because Steve Nash, they were never able to get over the hump. So, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I don't see him. Rat- I don't see him rattling off MVPs in the future with the guys that are currently in the league ahead of him. So it would have to be playoff success. I'll say it's possible, but I'm not going to bet on it. Yeah, it, it'll. He he'll have to do some insane shit. Not insane shit, but he'll have to do some real wizardry with that roster. Bradley Beal's back got to be on. The, he has to put Bradley, Bradley Beal's back in. He has to put vibranium into <laughs> Bradley Beal's back in order to get that shit straight. But I don't see that happening. Okay. Next one, De'Aaron Fox. Who is their Listen, franchise? It doesn't take goat? a lot to be the King's goat. So. <laughs> it doesn't take shit, bro. <laughs> listen, Loki, he already might be the King's goat. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I mean, listen, he's gonna have to win a playoff series in order to do that. That's the bar. <laughs> he ended a yeah, 16, playoff 17 year drought. What do you expect? Listen, win oh, a playoff series, maybe get to the conference finals. We'll see what happens. Hey, maybe get a single triple double. Maybe score a 25 tri- points <laughs> twice in a row. That'll do it for the king. Y'all are insane. <laughs> That's kind of get a bar. I'm gonna okay, say yeah. it's real. <laughs> yeah, <'cause, laughs> yeah. He he definitely does. Yeah, I'll I'll say say that yes, he can be the king's go if he brings them success that they haven't seen in like decades. Yeah, a singular conference finals appearance. He can make that happen. <laughs> I don't know if he can, but anyways. 
Next up, Ja Morant. Hmm. I'm going to say, mean, yeah. listen, that's completely up to him. <laughs> Whether or not he <laughs> wants to be the, the Grizzlies GOAT. Um, he can either be the Grizzlies GOAT or he can never mind. Let's relax. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's listen. all the talent in the world. That's not the issue. He only has Zebo, Tony Allen, and Marcus Gasol in his way. Let's be real for a he's second. Like, he could be Tony there, Allen in there. <laughs> he's yeah. a Tony Allen over Mike Conley. <laughs> all i know is that he needs to at least play games for him to be the team's goat so we will see what happens down the line it's very doable. i'm gonna say yes he definitely can will he tbd he can either go <laughs> let me stop myself again <laughs> these are played out jokes <laughs> yeah but yeah i think john definitely has a talent to eventually be this team's goat He's 100%. already the most talented player in that franchise's history, so there's a clear path. Very fair. How dare you say that over Shane Battier? <laughs> Shane Battier, <laughs> bald ass. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. Zion Williamson. <laughs> Who is no. this team's goal? No. CP3? No. Surpassing yeah. him? Or Ant? Anthony Davis? Nah. Ooh. He, he yeah, nah. Have it. I'm, I'm out. You're out? I'm out. He's, he will not be the Pelicans GOAT. We, you want to talk about low bars. <laughs> okay, never mind, never mind, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All these unhinged jokes ready to come out. I mean, again, it's like Ja. He certainly has the talent to. Does he want it bad enough? Does he have a desire to be the Pelicans GOAT? I'm not sure. I don't know, He man. won't. He ain't got it. He's in year five now, and we still have serious questions about him. This should not be happening. Yeah, that conversation's over. We should. The only question is: Is he going to be a multiple-time All Star, and that's it? But as for a team goat, that's not the question. I don't want to take it out yeah. the question because the bar is so low still. But CP3 is a bar. That's a pretty high bar. It's CP3. Yeah, but he didn't do shit for that organization for real in the playoffs. So it's like, <laughs> how how low how high can the bar be? It's not that high at all. CP3 carried them through Katrina. What is Zion carrying them through? Shit. Complete and utter Nothing. embarrassment. <laughs> he's there at least. He's trying, god damn it. <laughs> is he trying? Is he trying? <laughs> he's then not he trying got beat by anything. 44 points. He's not trying. And he turned around and he dropped 36. <laughs> <laughs> we, right. we don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> that he lost listen, an IST. This is how we in the story. Right. We don't care about that. <laughs> His career is already tainted by that. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. That's the last one. And that's the end of the show. What should people comment the show here? Oh man, <laughs> why is Nikhil laughing? <laughs> he knows what they should comment. <laughs> Nikhil, what should they comment? You can decide twice in a row. They should. They should comment. <laughs> Draymond is the goat. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's. <laughs> He's escaping. You can comment that. If, you can comment that if you'd like. This is the end of the show. We'll see y'all later. All right. Peace.